And we're here with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to go through the page of the National Dailies. We call it Off the Press, and this morning, Upunabo Nkotaria joins us. Uh, Nkotaria, it's good to have you join us. Merry Christmas and happy Boxing Day. Good morning, Messi. Merry Christmas and happy Boxing Day. Okay, I hope that and you... And happy New Year, Nathan. Happy New Year, Nathan. Thanks. Uh, I hope you got boxes that you you probably would have unveiled or will unveil, you know, sometime later today. Later today. <laughs> All right, then. Let's take a quick look at the Nation newspaper this morning and uh, find out uh, what's big on the Nation. On the Nation, experts x-ray tunable's plan on exchange rates and subsidy on unified rate will support growth says uh analyst the local refineries must work these are the riders that you find vice president yemi shibajo governors to nigerians let's unite muslims pray with christians in church well it goes beyond the act and uh a lot is expected to be behind or, you know, more than all of that shenanigans, like some people would describe that. It's important that there's tolerance and unity. G5 struggle beyond 2023. MDAs, lawmakers behind delay in budget passage. And uh, just before we move away, I'm, I'm sure that that's the much we can take at this point on the nation. Uh, not so much uh, to read this morning. Uh, we'll quickly turn our attention from the nation to the Punch newspaper. On the Punch newspaper, PDP APC clash as Coker slams Buhari. Matthew Coker, the bishop, we bear scars, deep sorrow. Our children are still in forests, says Matthew Coker. Cleric's statement, ungodly, not objective. Buhari deserves credit. That's what the APC is saying. Now, uh, another writer says, PDP backs Coker. Lumpun's APC says everything Buhari did was wrong. Federal government plans tax weaver suspension for rural firms. There's only 5.4% irrigated farmland in Nigeria. That's what the federal government is saying. Nigeria missed 2022 poverty reduction target, the World Bank is quoted to say. And fuel scarcity, NNPC marketers to begin mass supply. Double registration, defaulters won't be disenfranchised, says INEC. Woman exhumes ex-husband cops fight son over property. That's too dramatic. Uh, that's the much we could take this morning on the Punch newspaper. We quickly turn our attention uh, this morning to the son. Now the son, I won't leave in Abuja after office. Buhari is quoted, but of course, that's exactly what should happen. Can a president get over his tenure? I mean. Uh, his tenure is over. Can the president still leave in Asarog when his tenure is over? There's no need stating the obvious. He would definitely leave. Says reason is to avoid problems. Thanks, Nigerians, for supporting farewell Christian message. Things I will improve, Asarog sharply in promises. Well, remain hopeful for better nation, Obi tells Nigerians. Akere Dolu, Uguwai, Zulum, Ikpoyazu orders tax citizen on love, tolerance, unity, hitch free election. In security, it's national shame to have ungoverned spaces. Anglican Bishop is quoted to say that's Matthew Coker. Matthew Coker right there. Withdrawal limit, currency management costs increasing by 100, I beg your pardon. Currency management costs increasing by 10 billion annually. That's what the CBN is saying. And uh, this is quite unfortunate as a lot of persons celebrate Christmas. Nine die, scores injured in Lagos, Ibadan. Buchi road crashes. 
Again, you find Bishop Koka laments state of the nation, says Nigerians more valuable more than in 20... I take that again. Bishop Koka laments state of the nation, says Nigerians more vulnerable more than in 2015. MBF, uh, others back cleric. Christmas cow kills Bayasa ex-youth president. Really? Very unfortunate. Umahi sanctions APC for contravening executive order. Muslim groups attend Christian services and present gifts in Zaria. These are some of the headlines we uh, stories we can take this morning on the Daily Sun newspaper. Open a bong. Uncle Taria, thank you once again for joining us. Let's quickly share your thoughts on this one. It's big on the Daily Sun newspaper. I won't leave in Abuja after office. Uh, the president has spoken. His plan is not to stay in Asarok. He's going to leave uh, for several reasons. What are your thoughts? Well, Messi, um, first, I cannot pass up the rationale behind that statement. Because it is obvious. I mean, the students tell us we are talking about producers of passenger who relocated to Ota, Chagari relocated to his state. Um, Jonathan is shuttling between the Abuja and the Bayelsa. So it's expected that he's definitely going to relocate. That does not mean he, after relocating to Katsina, he will never leave Katsina again. So I really can't rationalize that statement, why he made that statement. I think there was um, a rider to that when he said um, to avoid whatever, whatever. In fact, the truth about it is it is rationally inexplicable. That's all I have to say. Because Katsuna is his own state. Daura, I think it's from Daura. Daura is his local government. If you're in office and you're in office, you're expected to relocate to your home state. If you want to also remain in Abuja, it is within your exclusive preserve to show you as a president, a former president. So I don't think that should not be, I don't think that should be contemporized by the media as a non issue. For that to be a headline on the national newspaper, it simply means, um, there is information per mind. In other words, probably they don't have anything to publish and they just wanted to, and they must be out. The paper must be put to bed, so they just carry something. Otherwise, it should, it's not what should make the news. I mean, it's, it's not what. Why we are relocated to Katsina? So if I have to buy a paper today, I will not buy a paper because Buhari said he was going to relocate to Katsina. That's no news. It's expected of him. Wherever he relocates to, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. As a president, what we want the uh, delivery of um, the dividends of democracy. And good governance, that's all we want. We are, it is the business of you and members of your family. It's as simple as that. So why should the paper want to make it uh, a headline and you expect me to use my hard-earned money to... No, but, but should, it, should, it, should, it, should, it, should it should it not be of a major concern? You know, um, this is not trying to hold brief for the paper. But, you know, when you have the president making such statement that when he leaves office, he would leave Asarok. I mean, is he supposed to stay in Asarok when he leaves office? It's quite contradictory. Why would he say that he should leave? What that, does, what, is, what is there, is I there, think, is there I, any I law that states that, that when the president uh, quits office or leaves office, he has to stay in Asarok for a time? Maybe that's what we don't know because he's saying that he would have to quit Asarok and that's because he doesn't want trouble. Is it expected to stay in Asarok? Abuja. What, what we read was Abuja, or what we heard was Abuja. No, he said he would leave uh, Asarok. That's I, what the I, paper I, is saying. If he says he's going to leave Asarok, that's what I'm saying. You know, it's like repeating myself. It's no news. It's automatic. You're going to leave Asarok. Then, then the president no shouldn't have said that. All that's why I said it is rationally inexplicable. If you listen to me. I said, so that shouldn't form a headline. So it makes no sense. Why are you saying it? Why are you telling us? When you leave office, wherever you go to is the business of your family. You are members of your family. So why should the paper? That's why I said maybe it's famine of information, news. They don't have news. Otherwise, why should the paper carry it? It makes no sense. 
Every governor says this. All presidents say, oh, by the time I leave office, I retire to my home. By the time I do this, I do that. So that, I mean, it's no news. We shouldn't even be discussing that. That's the point I'm making. If you will leave, really, really, whether you like it or not, you're going to leave Asso Rock. If you remain in Asso Rock, you're remaining in Asso Rock as a guest of the sitting president. And that is also the prisoner of the sitting president. He can decide to say, no, please, be my uh, unofficial advisor. I want you to remain in Asso Rock. So it's not an issue. That's the point I'm making. It's not what we should be discussing. Mr. President said he's going to exit Asso Rock when he leaves office. I, I, is that news? You ought to, it is a must that you exit. If you want to write now, it is a right that he stays as a sitting president. But if you exit, it becomes a privilege if your successor wants you to remain. That's the point I'm making. So we shouldn't even be dissipating energy, discussing this in anything. These are trifles. There are other burning issues that we should be addressing whenever we come on air, not to talk tell us and discuss what Mr. President said is going to leave. But even if he likes not to go to America, wherever he goes to, it is bloody hell business. It's nobody's business. Oh, well, we have to be careful so with the choices of words this morning, Okunabor. Bloody, uh, hell is, 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 bloody hell is not a negative thing. Oh, well, it it's, 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 it's not so friendly at the same time. It is, it, is, it is also not antagonistic. It is also not an antagonistic. When you say it's your bloody hell business, it's your business. That's what somebody is telling you. It's also not an antagonistic. It's not a lewd language. That's the point I'm making. That's his business. So we shouldn't be discussing that on air. Oh, 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 about I, 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 I want you, I want, what I'm saying is this, Where is Mr. that. President will retire to. Shagari left and went back to his state. Uh, or passenger left and went back to Ota. Uh, Jonathan is shortly be he retired to Bayasa, but it's something between Bayasa and Abuja because he has this international engagement. So why should you sit down here and be disciplined in energy of where Mr. President will go to? I will leave us wrong. It's, it's, hey, it's not about Mr. where Mr. President... Mr. President Unkotaria, it's not about why Mr. President or where Mr. President will be going to. It's, a, it's about the fact that he said he would quit. Just like you have stated, I mean, it's it's so it's so complex to understand that why would you, I mean, why would you talk about what is obvious naturally? Yeah, and that's why we're talking about, about it, and that's why it's a news element. That's where that's, that's where this fault. argument is coming Excuse from. Now, you have said, that is the fault of the media. That's why I said the media, probably because it's on a Monday, they don't have news stories. What is complex about that? And it probably was even quoted out of context. Maybe he was even discussing with his friend. That I'm tired of let me. You have always said well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we want to go into. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we want to go into um, the classification of why sh that should be a conversation. But you see, the reason why you think that that shouldn't be a conversation is the reason why it should be a conversation. It's it's not why why okay all this while you said he's tired. He wants to leave. Why 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 didn't they contemporize that last thing? No, it was talked about. He's discussing with somebody to say, but because it's coming from the president. Oh, this, this will sell my paper. I want to ask you, what is the rationale behind that? Because it's very it's the governor of the governor of the has said, I have left government house. I'm operating from my house. Then the paper will go and carry. It. I have left. Oh, open a bank, Otaria. Um, uh, let's I'm move forward. From my house. Let's let's move forward, you know, for the want of time and that we're able to look at other papers. But I also hope that you understand that the fact that it's very unusual to say that you would not stay in Astro Rock is the reason why that's, you know, making the rounds. Because why would okay, you stay in Astro Rock? Think? That's the point. I don't, There's no, I, I, don't, I don't know if, you know, Barack uh, Obama woke up and said, I would leave, you know, I, when I leave office, I would have to I stay in Astro Rock. I mean, it's, what's that? Question. I, I asked a question. Okay, what can you clean from that statement? That's why we're what talking I, about it. It's, 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 it's very, it's very shocking. It's, it's not supposed to be. I can't respond I can't do one responding. He has said it now. Now, what are you going to What is your interpretation that Mr. President intended to stay put? It is ridiculous for anybody to say that because you must leave us all. That's why are it's been talked you, about. The intention was to. And so you should be dismissed. That's what I'm saying. It's not what should be discussed. Are you going to say Mr. President intended that when I leave Asura, when I, I leave a comment with the man, I must remain in Asura? Even if he says that, it's not what we should discuss. Because the concern does not allow it. Because even if his son 
eventually becomes the president, which is not possible because his son is not on the ballot. Even if his son eventually becomes the president, he says, I am going to remain in Nassau. It is not what we should discuss. Probably what he's telling you is that because my son is going to be the president, I will remain here. He is not going to send me. So why are we going to dissipate energy discussing such issues? Open a bank, the, the punch. There. Let's he's look at the punch. Rock. He's not going to share Asso Rock with the sitting president. He cannot. So why are we going to discuss it? Well, if today Buhari gets out to say, uh, uh, I don't like it in the morning, the papers will carry it. I, I don't like it in the morning. So I, I have a that feeling that you're just trying to blame the media. But, but, I I have been, but I have been trying to let you know how these things actually work. You're playing the devil but, but you are, but, but, but you are refusing to see, see points. You know, it's not because it's the president that said it. Because it makes no sense. Let's look. Messi, there are burning issues in this country that we should be discussed. There are issues that, if you go, a lot of people did not travel for Christmas as a result of the economic cost. These are the issues the papers, the media should be analyzed. I'm a journalist as well. Not to get up. If we cannot get up to say, I will not stay. We have left government house long ago. And he has said it. So now, if I have to headline my paper, I'm not saying, we can leave government house. He locates to personal bill. I don't understand. I, don't, I can't get it. I can't get it. When pensioners are not paid, no promotion and social service, I do not know those things are now for a week as left government house. I don't, I don't get it. That's why I said, rationally, they're speaking. I don't get it. I don't get it. So we should discuss boiling issues. You should, okay, Mr. President will not leave us alone. How does that affect the average Nigerian? What's the business of the average Nigerian with that? These are not the issues we should be discussing. Unless you are telling me that Mr. President is not going to leave us alone because he's going to fight with his successor, which is also not possible. That's the point I'm making, which is also not possible. It is not possible. Because God made you tonight, he has lost the powers of the president. And the successor will immediately have all the power. Even if he says no, he will be forced out of Asura. So what are we discussing? That's the point I'm making. Why should we be discussing such uh, 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 trifles? When there are other issues to be burning and best issues to be addressed. It's completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. If they say Christ will come tomorrow, then they start arguing. Let's wait till that time. Let's wait till that time. So let us discuss major burning issues. Issues that affect the lives of rural Nigeria. Those are the things we should be discussing. Not where Mr. President will locate to. Is he the first president? Is he going to be the last president? He's not the first, he's not the last. Good luck, let's not so wrong. Has he not been visiting us so wrong? He has been visiting us so wrong. There is no way as a former president you remain in Nassau. If you remain there, it's a matter of privilege. At the instance of the sitting president. So why are we discussing it? We should be worried. We, 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 should, we should be worried that he's he's thinking that he he can stay there. That's why we're talking about it. Okunabo, we need to move away. We have the punch he cannot, newspaper. He cannot. Of course, we know that he cannot. Okunabo, let's uh, move on, please. We, we need to just move on. Really, we we need to move on. Uh, the punch says PDP APC clash as Coker slams Buhari. I'd like to share your thoughts on the back and forth. I mean, Matthew Coker is one bishop that seemed to be, you know, head on. He says uh, the things the way it is and how it affect, affects, you know, the masses, the public. And uh, there's been a back and forth with it. And some people are saying that uh, the AP is quoted to say that Buhari deserves credit. Uh, the cleric statement is ungodly and not objective. Uh, what are your thoughts? Paraventure, you have, you know, read through all of this comment. And back and forth. I don't need to, I've not gone through any comment. I've not bothered to go through them. Uh, but one thing you should understand next is the church which Kuka represents. One is a renowned critic and is somebody whose words cannot be treated with many. And the church which Kuka represents is not just a thermometer to record events and stories and so on, as we have in the Bible. The church is also a thermostat to transform the morals of society. And so any cleric who divorces himself from politics is abdicating his role as a cleric. So when Kuka comes up to say 
or to criticize the government. It's expected, yes, that the president, officials, such as the ministers, and so on, the spokesperson, who, whether they like it or not, will have to defend their principle, will come up to counter. It's expected. Because they can't just sit back and allow it to go. Then not also, they're also not going to be doing their job. That's why most times you find out that those in charge of the information machinery of a government, especially when the government has performed abysmally, find themselves in a very difficult position. Because whether you like it or not, you have an option of either resigning or you remain there to defend a bad policy, even when such a policy cannot be defended. So it is agreed. And don't forget, this is also uh, an ele electionarian period. Therefore, you have the APC, which we already represent. You also have the PDP and other political parties. So anytime you criticize Buhari, especially when it is in the negative, the political parties will have to rise up because it rubs up on the political party and at the same time affect the outcome of the election, the election, the forthcoming election. So APC is also expected to defend it. No doubt about that. But then let us go into what Kuka says. You see, I always tell people, Messi, as you are there, you, nobody can come and tell you, Messi, you're a man. Nobody. No matter how they... In fact, let the man, let, him, let that person tell you he's coming from heaven. God just sent him that you're a man. You will just dismiss him. You will even, maybe even think he has some mental issues. What is going on in this country is palpable and published. There is hunger in the land. We are not saying we in all aspects. Bill, when it comes to uh, infrastructure development, well, to let us that you can give them credit. Talk of railroad, rails, and so on and that. But when it comes to the economy, when it comes to security, and these are the two major things any government will address, he has filled that business. He has performed that business. And so, whatever Kuka says, Kuka does not even need to say. Nigerians are saying it. So whether you criticize Cook or not, that's for from now to tomorrow. It doesn't change anything. Like I said, nobody can come and tell me, Ognabo, oh, you're a woman. I'll just say you're mad. I fact, at the point I'll not even talk to you. Because I think you have a mental problem. And engaging you will mean you also have that mental problem. Why can you come and tell me I'm a woman? Or Messi, you're a man. These things are there. They have evidentiary proof. They are abound. This is a failed government in all aspects. It's a failed government. And Kuka is just uh, uh, voicing the opinion of the majority of Nigeria. So, criticizing from now to tomorrow is your hey, bloody business. That's your business. But the fact remains it was um, the late Winston Churchill who said, uh, truth is incontrovertible. Panic may deride it, malice may distort it. But there it is. And this is the case here. You cannot tell any Nigerian how much will uh, chicken, uh, chicken going for today in Nigeria. The ram, the goats, a bag of rice. People can't celebrate Christmas, the festive period anymore. And you come to tell Nigeria that you performed well. On the paper, too, we saw how, but yes, now we, I give them credit. But we saw how this, the security situation has first started. Under this very regime. So what are you going to talk about? People are just scared of traveling to the East, especially. They are scared. It has never been this bad in this country. So what are you going to tell me? What, what defense are you going to put on? So I, the truth about it is that, yes, these are APC members. These are friends of Mr. President. And these are managers of his information machinery. So, of course, it is incumbent on them to defend, especially now that uh, the political hostings have started. Because it's going to rub up negatively on the party and the charges. These things have subliminal effects. And so they really have to do a damage control. And that is why they come up with the defense. Even those who are defending the government, how, you ask them, how much did they buy a bag of rice seven years ago, eight years ago, and how much is the bag of rice now? But probably they don't have the pinch 
They are not feeling the pinch because they are spending government money. When they leave office, they don't feel the pinch. But within them, I believe when they are talking, they are closer, they also admit that the government has failed. Are you talking about security, are you talking about economy? It has failed. Well, um, you know that uh, one of the gains, as it's properly been stated, is that you know we have been very big in terms of the production of rice. Since you have mentioned rice in the course of this conversation, uh, we have been great on it. And Nigeria has been reported to be the largest producer of rice in Africa, producing about uh, 8,433,000 uh, metric tons, if I'm not mistaken, followed by Egypt, Madagascar, Madagascar and Tanzania. Okay, 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 okay. I, okay, let me quickly address this now. First and foremost, you said Nigeria is a large of rice. Okay, fine, no problem. You know, like when the economists will come up to say the GDP and the that, you see, the truth is GDP, GDP, that, GDW, GDP, GSP, GDP, GDP, all kind of GDP. The truth is how much, how does it affect the common man? The largest producer of rice Yes, when we are not the largest producer of rice, rice sold at the cheaper rate. It's a paradox. Today we are the largest producer. It's selling at the higher rate. How do you reconcile that? That is number one. Number two, the producers of rice do not depend on rice alone. They depend on every other thing. So they go to the market. They buy tomatoes. They buy onions. They pay rent. They are by generators. So even if you are the largest producer of rice, what are the domino effects? You can buy petrol to run your plant, to produce the rice. You are going to pay for your office rent. You are going to pay children's cooking. So we are talking of economy. That's why I say that is not a password. You are talking of economy in general. So it's like um, uh, when you increase the price of petrol, it has a dominant effect on everything. Some people ask, petrol, okay, the woman in the market, what, what is her business with petrol? And I say, what are you talking about? She goes home to run her generator. Her source of income is the, is the, is the tomatoes. It is from that tomatoes she will have to care, cater for her family. The family members will go to school, they will run generators, they will buy fish, if you sell tomatoes, they will buy fish, they will buy rice. So it's, it's, it's a whole gamut. Now, I ask again, the largest producers of rice, yet, the price of a bag of rice in 2015 is almost half, if not less, than the price of a bag of rice in 2022. How do you reconcile it? How do you reconcile it? When you talk about the economy, you're not just talking about just one side of the economy. No. So how do you reconcile it? So when you come to tell me the high to the it makes no sense to me. If I buy rice, when I not cook the rice, will I eat the rice alone? What sense will you make if in, uh, 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 you, you say high to of rice? Meanwhile, I cannot even afford the rice. I cannot even afford it. We are not the highest producers. I could buy bags, buy for my family and give to others. Now that we are the highest producers, I cannot. It, is, it, 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 it reminds us of the, of the oil industry. One of the life producers of oil. Yes, look at the cost of uh, petrol. How do you reconcile? So if you are the highest of rice and the price of rice has soared, then there is a problem. We create the same problem we are facing in the oil industry, the same problem we are facing in the rice. Then there's a cartel. Because as the high producer of rice, rice should go for 10,000 10, 10, 10, per bag, or at least 15,000 per bag. Because you are, you are talking of a, a comparative advantage at this point now, like we say in economics, comparative advantage. If I remember my secondary school economics very well. So it doesn't make any sense coming to tell me that we are happy with our friends. It makes no sense. No sense at all. Okay. Well, 
I mean, uh, these are statistics from the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations. Upunabon uh, Katera, thank you so much. We have to leave it at this point and we have to go. Uh, we you. hope that we have more time to talk about uh, these very critical issues that are of major concern for our economy and our democracy. Thank you. All right, then. Upunabong Katara is a public affairs analyst. He joined us this morning from River State. Thank you so much and have yourself a Merry Christmas. We take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at our first conversation. Please stay with us.